I, I, when I start, came here, I decided that the thing I really wanted to do here is to start a bunch of interesting projects. And yes, I have reached that goal, absolutely. We, I have so much to work on, so much to think about, so many conversations to continue with many people here. Um, and so yes, I've absolutely achieved the goals for the semester. Now, of course, if someone said, okay, you can, you can be more lay chair for the rest of your life and just be in Marseille and talk math with people, I would say, sure. Yes, uh, I work in geometry and dynamical systems. I like to think about shapes and I like to think about movement. So geometry is the study of shapes, uh, of measuring things, and dynamical systems is the study of movement or motion. In particular, something I really like to study are very, very simple models of what we would call sort of Newtonian mechanics, the kind of things you learned about maybe in high school, maybe in college, and it's the kind of thing we think we maybe know a lot about, but in fact, there's very, very quickly, we get to quite interesting problems that we don't know the answer to. For example, if you take uh, the motion of a small ball in, in a billiard table, and you look at how it bounces around the billiard table, and since I'm a mathematician, I'm going to assume there's no friction, uh, and I'm gonna assume when it hits a wall, the ball doesn't slow down. These are assumptions that we make to make the problem easier. The real problem is probably even harder. And I study the motion uh, of how that ball spreads around the table. Does it, where does it visit? If I start it off in a random direction and it starts bouncing around the table, does it visit everywhere on the table? Does it come back to where it started? Does it come back close to where it started? Could it hit a corner? You might say, where did corners come from? The, the tables I really like are what are called polygons or polygonal billiard tables. Um, and so this is one big area of my research. Another area of my research is I like to think about what are called lattices or grids in the plane or grids in higher dimensional space and how you can change lattices and deform lattices and again, move them. So you might think about moving, taking some flexible, taking some grid and flexing it in some way or shifting it in some way and trying to understand how the properties of that lattice change as you do this motion. So the phrases are again, geometry and dynamical systems, but more specifically, I work in what are called dynamics on moduli spaces and dynamics on homogeneous spaces. The main reasons for our applying are that Marseille One is an incredible place to do this kind of research. The people here, there's a group here, in fact, much of the research I do in some ways has its origins from researchers in Marseille, and it still has a current fantastic group of people. I start to name a couple of names, but I don't claim that this is a full list because there's many just fantastic people. But of course, uh, Nicolas, who was my co-chair, we worked together for the semester, and Pascal, who's the director of CIRM. We've actually known each other for almost 20 years, or actually more than 20 years now. Um, and I've learned a lot of mathematics from both of them. Nicolas and I were both graduate students at the same time. Um, and so the idea of coming, spending time in this wonderful place, Marseille is an incredible city, Serum is such a special place to do mathematics and to work with people like Pascal, Nicolas, Serge, Julien, Sebastian, um, you know, there's just an endless list of people, Olga, Magali, like just an endless list of incredible people to talk mathematics with here. So it was the opportunity to engage with that wonderful group and the opportunity to be in Marseille that really motivated me to apply. I should actually mention one more big important thing is a huge name in that list that uh, was one of the people who really strongly encouraged me to apply was Pierre Arnoux. So Pierre had hosted a more lay semester before with Shigeki Akiyama, and we were chatting. In fact, I think I was staying in Pierre's place in Noai, and he strongly encouraged me. And so I want to thank Pierre hugely for mentoring in general, but also just the invitation to apply. So Nicola and I, thought a lot about this because we have many different things that we were excited to think about. But one project that we're particularly excited about is studying billiards. So I described to you how a billiard ball moves around in a shape on two dimensions. We wanted to go up a dimension and think about billiards in three dimensions. 
in what we call a polyhedron. So a billiard ball moving around in three-dimensional space, bouncing around inside this kind of polyhedron. And we proved uh, one of the things, we're still working on writing it down carefully, but we proved that in a, in a, in a very precise sense for a certain family of, of these polyhedra, that the billiard flow is what's called ergodic. That is, the billiard ball visits every part of the polyhedra roughly evenly. Um, and this was known for, for basically squares and hexagons for the kinds of things we, or cubes and um, maybe a hex, what's called a hexagonal prism, but we've extended it to a, a much larger class of uh, potential uh, polyhedra. That's one of the things we did, for example. It's just a nice one. Thank you for that question, and also thank you for the very kind words about the semester. And indeed, for me, it has been incredible. Um, just to mention something concrete in this direction, last week we had a wonderful workshop bringing together 10 artists and 10 mathematicians organized by Olga Paris Romeskovich. And I think the reason that, that I like to be in community with artists so that my math may have something to do with this is that um, for me, both are creative endeavors. They're a way of telling stories about sharing human perspectives. In mathematics, we're telling stories about patterns. And artists, I think, are also doing that. Artists, music, visual artists, musicians. Um, and I think the process of thinking creatively, the process of making something that you then share with others are things that math and art have in common. Also, the math I do is I'm very lucky in the sense that the math I do has a strong visual element. You can visualize a ball bouncing around a polygon. You can visualize a ball bouncing around a polyhedron. You can visualize a lattice and shifting and so on. So, of course, some of it comes from wanting to see the pictures that are in my head um, or the videos that are in my head. And I think this may be true for artists as well. They have something inside their head that they want to share with other people. And so I think that's the commonality for me, the commonality of wanting to share something interesting, some pattern, some image with, with, with others. And I'm lucky enough that my math has a lot of images. Alison Martin is an incredible visual artist, working mostly in sculpture, but also in other media, um, who's based in Italy. Alison and I first interacted when uh, she reached out to me about some of my research on the dodecahedron. Um, and when I was coming to Serum, I thought this would be a great opportunity to connect in person and maybe make something together. Um, and Alison works with bamboo, works with rigid structures and flexible structures, works on questions of sustainability, things at the intersection of sculpture and architecture has done famous large-scale installations in places all over the world. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to exchange ideas about surfaces, about lattices, about rigidity and flexibility. Um, and this timing worked out beautifully because Allison also was able to be here for the 10th anniversary celebrations of the Morley Chair uh, and was able to produce a really quite wonderful sculpture um, in based on some discussions that we had, based on some of the work that a former postdoc of mine, Dami Lee, did. Uh, it's sitting in the CIRM library. It's made out of bamboo and lycra. And it's really remarkable because we actually, all of us uh, at CIRM, we got this chance to essentially see it being made. She had brought many of the materials from her home in Italy um, and started to work on it in the CIRM library, putting the bamboo, so that there's kind of a bamboo frame and an incredible lycra fabric sort of going through the frame and she's so hand sewing pieces. And what's amazing about it is you can look at it and you can see many different mathematical concepts just jumping out at you. You can see what are called closed curves on surfaces. You can see what are called pants decompositions of surfaces. You can see hyperbolic geometry. Um, so it's just amazing that you can kind of see this all from a real life physical object. And working with her has just been an incredible pleasure. She's an incredibly nice person incredibly thoughtful person and um, loves to share her ideas and her enthusiasm with people. I want to also just highlight the fact that she, during her time here in Marseille, also spent time four hours with high school students, helping teaching them how to weave uh, 
paper how to put bamboo together and helping them make their visions come to life. Uh, and this is really special. I think this is also something where math and art can come together in helping connect with students and helping bring both subjects to a bigger audience. Absolutely. So as part of the 10th anniversary celebrations of the Morley Chair, with your help, Stephanie, uh, I mean, really, it's incredible what you've done. We put together an exhibit targeted at, well, there was different parts of it. One part, which was done mainly by Anton Zorich with you, was uh, sort of targeted towards more research mathematicians trying to explain the research that Mariam had done on the geometry of surfaces and the geometry of moduli spaces, what we call spaces of surfaces, different ways of looking at different geometries. What you and I worked on was uh, an explanation targeted at kind of a general public about how would we express the idea of a space of surfaces or a space of shapes. Um, and we focused on the idea of, well, everyone is familiar with the idea of a triangle and with the idea that some triangles are the same or some triangles are similar, and some triangles are genuinely different. So we illustrated that using a combination of chalkboard writing, English and French text, and some animations, uh, and that is now in the Serum Library. We, it was part, it was a part of a, a day for high school students, and hopefully we'll try to do some traveling around France. Um, and it's, and as to my relationship with Mariam, uh, she was a colleague and a friend. Uh, we wrote papers together, she was, uh, you know, about a year ahead of me, um, we weren't in the same graduate school, but she graduated a year before I did and was always someone you would look forward to meeting and look forward to talking to because you knew she had, one, she had incredible ideas that you wanted to hear. Two, she would engage with your ideas and help you refine them and help push them in new and unexpected directions. And one of the things I really want to highlight about her is her generosity in that she was willing to exchange and share ideas with everyone. Um, with graduate students, you know, she was interested in the idea, not in how famous the person who brought the idea to her was, uh, which was always a really lovely quality. And of course, we all miss her very much. She was taken, you know, but she was, she passed away from cancer much too early. Um, and it's quite, um, you know, it's a wonderful time to be here. It's a wonderful time. We're in the middle of a conference right now, but it's always a little bit sad to not see her at the conferences that you would have hoped to see her at for you know, a very long time. So for me, in fact, the, the whole semester was incredible. Uh, the opportunity to think uh, in this great environment, to be discussing with people who are, I, I was telling someone that what's really wonderful is the ability to start in the middle of a sentence and have the people around you understand and appreciate what you're saying. Particular highlights include having my friend and colleague Pat Hooper come and visit for a month and really thinking about these billiards and drawing pictures and arguing and spending hours in the chapelle um, and just getting to the right idea. Um, having my friends uh, Jean Lagasse, Martin Moeller, Mar Martin Raum for a research in teams in August uh, where it was pretty empty because it's August, but we would talk and then we'd be like, okay, now we have to go to the Kalank and go for a swim. And then we would come back and we would keep talking. And just that energy of talking about math. And the other huge highlight is, uh, you know, of course, talking to Nicola, my co-chair, you know, we would sit and we would chat and then we would go back into Marseille sometimes and have a beer and keep chatting. And talking to Pascal, the director of the Institute who gave us so much time and spent so much time chatting. I remember sitting, talking to him at Serum, sitting in a coffee shop in the Vauban and filling up so many pages of notebook paper as the people in the coffee shop, I think, really were very curious, you know, what are these guys doing? Um, so all of these are huge highlights. Of course, as you say, distinguished visitors, a huge highlight for me would be the 10th anniversary celebrations. I'm very lucky to be here during that 10th year and getting to meet so many of the former Morley chairs, some of whom I knew, some of whom I didn't, but getting to hear about the amazing work that they do at the 10th anniversary celebrations, getting to go to Marseille City Hall and appreciate the support the city of Marseille has given this program and to see, um, see what this program means to the mathematics community, uh, I think was really, really special. 
And then this week, with so many people from around the world, this is kind of the last big celebration. We have, you know, 80 mathematicians coming from all over the world and just fantastic talks. Uh, it's been really, really lovely. So, you know, it's hard because in some sense, the whole semester is a highlight. Um, being here is a highlight for me, but those are some of the things that come to mind. I, I, when I start, came here, I decided that the thing I really wanted to do here is to start a bunch of interesting projects. And yes, I have reached that goal, absolutely. We, I have so much to work on, so much to think about, so many conversations to continue with many people here. Um, and so yes, I've absolutely achieved the goals for the semester. Now, of course, if someone said, okay, you can, you can be more lay chair for the rest of your life and just be in Marseille and talk math with people, I would say, sure. That sounds great. Um, so there's always more goals to achieve, uh, but yes, this, this has been just a wonderful time. I think how it brought scientific progress is it allowed a bunch of people, myself, Nicola, Pascal, many of the people I mentioned, Olga, Magali, all these folks around, it gave us a bunch of time to talk about math without any pressure to think about problems that may be speculative, that may be difficult, that may not be within immediate reach, um, and really think about them. Um, and so in terms of progress, uh, you know, we, we made a lot of progress on understanding these simple physical models, uh, billiard models. We have tried to understand problems about polyhedral surfaces. So there's very concrete problems, but I would say the bigger thing is the ability to connect to other researchers and to think about hard things without worrying about, okay, tomorrow I have to write a report. Um, and I think this is something that's extremely important, having support for science, which understands that science, and in particular mathematics, is not a short-term investment, it's a long-term investment. Um, and so I think this was the big thing for me. So, uh, and I will return uh, in January to the University of Washington in Seattle, where I'm a professor of mathematics and the comparative history of ideas. I will continue to work on many of the exciting research projects that were started while I was Morley chair. Uh, I will be back to teaching, um, which is exciting as well. Um, and I'm very much hoping to be a regular visitor to Marseille to continue work on many of these projects. Um, I, yeah, I think the general future plan is to try and you know, maybe finish some of these projects, but in math, finishing a project always means starting several new ones because the minute you finish, you realize there's so many interesting questions that you can answer now, or you can at least formulate and pose now, and that maybe you now have a chance to answer. Of that, in fact, so, as, 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 as you know, and I think maybe we'll talk about later, I have been coming to Marseille for a long time. Um, this is the longest I've ever been in Marseille, and I really would love to come back as often as I can for as long as I can to work with the amazing community here in Marseille, across France and across Europe. Um, in fact, I'm very much hoping if, uh, if some bureaucratic and administrative things work out to return in 2024 already, but I certainly plan to return, as I said, as often as I can. This is an extremely special place for me. It has a very special place in my heart, both personally and mathematically. So I will come back as, as often as they will have me back, I will come back. I think it's an incredible program. Um, and I think it's an incredible program also because of how it's structured in the sense that it has some structure. So it's not just that you come here, you have a fancy title, and you get to sit in an office by yourself and think about math. It's that you have some responsibilities. Along with your co-chair, you have to organize a workshop. You have to organize a summer school. You have to organize a conference. And I think this is fabulous because one, it means you get to invite people you're interested in interacting with. You have the resources to do that. CERM is an incredible place because once you basically put together the invitation list, the fantastic staff at CERM make your life so easy and they make the lives of your guests so easy. You get fed well, you get taken care of, um, you get an incredible library. 
you get excellent IT services, you get amazing publicity and communication services. So it's very easy to organize these things, but it's nice because it means that you are in community with people. So I think the structure of the Morley Chair program really makes, makes communities. And you could sort of see that as uh, while I was here, several of the previous Morley Chairs, not just for the 10th anniversary program, were coming back to have a research in Teams or for a conference and they were making connections. So I think the structure of the program means there are deeper connections for the mathematical community in Marseille, means there are deeper connections for the people who had the opportunity to serve as Morley Chair. And I think it, it, it's really incredible. So my feedback is keep this structure of which allows you to build community. Don't turn it into something where it's just someone sitting in an office talking to one person, because I think that's less, that's more common and less exciting and less special. Um, and it's fun to walk around Serum and to see the contributions of different Morley chairs. You see, you know, Erwig Hauser is incredible art all over, uh, all over Serum. You see the contributions of Morley chairs from across these 10 years. So I think this is my feedback. I think it's an incredible program that helps you build community, which is just fantastic. So uh, I am part of the leadership group of the Pacific Institute for the Mathematical Sciences. It's a mathematical sciences institute across Western Canada and uh, the Western United States, uh, Western North America, broadly speaking. Uh, I'm the co-director international, which means I focus on building collaborations with other international organizations. And PIMS and CIRM currently have a collaboration where visitors from PIMS institutions, when they come to CIRM for a conference, can extend their visit to work with a colleague or co-author in France or across Europe. And this was designed with the idea of, um, you know, when you travel across the Atlantic, that's a, there's a carbon footprint to that. And so we want to say when you come, well, come and spend some time and make it really, you know, let's, let's optimize that. Um, so that's one program we already have in place. I'm looking forward to working with Pascal um, and the rest of PIM's leadership and CIRM leadership to set up programs like perhaps twin events, where we would have an event at CIRM and an event hosted by a PIMS institution, and there would be interaction between the two conferences. So again, this would maybe reduce some carbon footprint, but also allow both the benefits of an in-person conference at each site, along with interactions internationally. So those are some of the examples. We're also hoping to work with, um, with SIMPA and with op opportunities to facilitate and support mathematics throughout the developing world, which is something that I know Serum has a deep interest and uh, a track record in doing. Uh, I know with the new chair um, that will give the opportunity for a mathematician from a developing country to come and spend time at CERM and, and use resources. I think this is an incredible thing and we're discussing how we can maximize that kind of impact. <laughs>